All right, welcome to Skill Up Academy. Yesterday we did history by having the first recorded training session on Skill Up Academy, and today we're doing that again in a different way. So today marks the first day we have a expert, outside expert, telling you about how to fight your fear of public speaking. I'm personally really excited for this. She's amazing, she's always smiling. I really love her energy. I think it's gonna be amazing. So without further ado, let's start with Rosemary Barnes. Hello, everybody. If you are one of the majority of people that as Seinfeld says, would rather be in the casket than having to give the eulogy, then you are in the majority. Public speaking somehow makes us feel less than in all aspects of the word. Let's get right into why. Why the fear? Let's go to that first slide. There it is. Let's get those butterflies to fly information so that you need butterflies. Absolutely you do, but you need them to fly information instead of turning into a tornado in your belly. Next slide, please. The causes of fear. In order to fight the fear, you have to know what the causes are. So let's consider, it's all about a lack of confidence in different ways and in different measures. We are afraid that our content may not be worthy. We feel we may not be worthy. Who are we to be able to tell anybody anything? We're not so special and we're afraid. We'd love to be special, but we're afraid we're not. We're afraid that what we have to say isn't noteworthy. We're afraid that when we get up there, people won't understand us or they can't hear us or they can't see us or something will go wrong. We're very afraid of how well we can stand and deliver. We are afraid that of criticism. We are so afraid that people are gonna say, I vey with that person, who did they think they are really? But in fact, they're not there to criticize you. They are, people are listening to us to get benefit from you. But the fear is that, oh my goodness, they're going to think less of us. And of course, the biggest fear, I think, for many, many speakers is that they are going to forget what they have to say in the first place. There are ways and means to remember that. And when I do a little episode on content, I'll tell you all about that. But so many things can go wrong, especially if you're in front of a camera. Technology is not my buddy. I, I mean, I can make a computer walk and talk, but to make it sing and dance, mm, not so good. So when it comes to technology and I, there's a huge fear that something is going to go wrong. Could we have the next slide, please? All right, what happens when we're fearful? Well, there's psychologically, physiologically, <laughs> and psychologically. Physiologically, what happens in our body when we are fearful? Well, you may sweat, you may get clammy, you may find yourself uh, uh, fidgety, you may find your voice uh, trembling and have a quiver in it, or you're, you have too much saliva or not enough. Have you ever been speaking and all of a sudden, mm, mm, you have to swallow? Well, why is it that we think that when we're up there, Swallowing is not acceptable, that we must be superhuman. Hmm. So our mouth could be too wet or too dry. What it shows up as is we have to get rid of, we have to dissipate that nervous energy. And what many speakers do is they begin pacing back and forth across the front of their presentation space like a caged polar bear in the zoo. Uh, and unfortunately, walking back and forth or rocking, we shift from one foot to the other, or even back and forth, lulling our audience to sleep. Pacing back and forth and moving without a need for moving does nothing but dissipate our message, but that's how we handle fear. That's how we get rid of the nervous anxiousness. The other thing that people do is they they hold themselves, they give themselves hugs, they steeple their fingers as if they are thinking. But in fact, this is nothing but holding your own hand, crossed arms, crossed legs. You'll see a lot of young people get up onto a presentation stage, they'll cross their legs at the ankles, they'll cross their arms across their bellies. They are so protecting themselves 
and everyone knows exactly why they're insecure. The most important thing that happens that we really have to deal with is breathing. When we're fearful, we begin to shallow breathe, pant like a dog on a hot summer day. <laughs> it dry, Oh, it's terrible. It's absolutely awful what shallow breathing does to us and fear makes that happen. Could we have the next slide, please? All right. Mentally, what does it do, do to our head? Well, first of all, that breathing thing can cause us to, the oxygen, when we breathe this way, doesn't have time to oxygenate our, oxygenate our bodies. And so our brain doesn't get what it needs to be working at top capacity. We get confused when we don't have enough air. We, we become addled. We become uh, a little bit frenzied. When we can't breathe, when we can't get air, you know what would happen to you if you were, you know, uh, choking and you can't get air. It's absolute panic. That's a great part of the fear is how we breathe. It makes us forgetful. When we are fearful, we forget because of the adrenaline. Uh, and then we just become completely overwhelmed. Next slide, please. Solutions, therefore. All right. The biggest solutions for ridding yourself of fear. No, you don't want to rid yourself of fear. A little bit of nervous energy puts that sparkle into your presentation and makes everybody go, ooh, what are they going to say next? So, but what you do need to relax that fear is, oh my goodness, do you ever need to prepare? Preparation makes us confident. Preparation means rehearsing. Preparation means knowing exactly what you're going to say, when you're going to say it, and what's going to accompany it. Most of all, <clears throat> pardon me, the biggest thing to remember is that you're not there to make yourself look good. You are there to provide a solution for your audience to their top of mind problem. Interesting, you are not there to strut your stuff. You are there to provide a solution to the audience's top of mind problem. Therefore, do they really care whether you had a tiny little trip uh, on the way up the stairs? They don't care. That has nothing to do with their top of mind problem. It's fine, it just washes away. It's just us. So preparation. Here's how you do a preparation in a very quick and dirty way. Here is how you organize content. You talk to the hand. This is all you're allowed. You're allowed your introduction, you're allowed your closing and call to action, and you're allowed topic one, topic two, topic three. That's it. Now prepare those. Know what you want to say about three things. It's all, just three. If you provide answers to more than three things, you're not going to remember their order and the details. And here's the big one neither will your audience. That's it. That's all we can accept in one go. Prepare. Make sure that when you are speaking, you are speaking to the audience, for the audience, uh, and for their benefit, not your own. That takes such a load off. When you realize that they're not there to criticize you, they're there for so you can help them, all of a sudden, you're the hero. All of a sudden, a hero can be wearing dirty chaps and old cowboy boots, but they've got the white hat. And as long as you have the mental thing about wearing the white hat, so much stress comes off. It's about them, not about you. All right. So during the presentation, here we go. Breathing. What I'd like you to do, please, as you're watching, is just I'm going to count to 10 and for 10 seconds, and it won't be slow, I'll count quite quickly, you are going to pant like a dog <sighs> with your tongue out and everything. Are you ready? Go. One, <sighs> two, three, <sighs> four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. How's your throat? How's your mouth? How's your brain? 
Are you feeling perhaps a little dizzy? Is your mouth dried out? Your throat a little scratchy? Now, that kind of breathing is good for two things and two things only. One is you're a hot German Shepherd on a very hot summer day, or number two, you're in labor and giving birth. Other than that, never do that again. The way to breathe is belly breathe. Breathe so that uh, the air goes down to the bottom of your lungs. It is relaxing. It gives you a second to think and it oxygenates all of you instead of just this part of your lungs. It makes you clever because it allows oxygen and energy to the vital parts, this part. Okay, breathing is important. So right now, put your hands uh, on your solar plexus, right in that diaphragm. And when you breathe, I want it to bulge. I want you to belly bulge. No one can see you, it's okay. So breathe in, feel your belly bulge and let go. And breathe in and breathe out. And all of a sudden, things are better. Things are calmer. Every time you feel yourself starting to <laughs> relax, take a deep breath and take that second to do it. It may seem an eternity to us, the presenter, to take time to breathe, but to the audience, it's nothing but a passing second. And it does them a favor. It gives them that little bit of time to absorb. We can talk faster than people can hear. So give them some time to listen. Give yourself some time to think. The other thing that you do, and this is a bit of my trademark thing, you make diamonds. Huh. What does it take to make diamonds? It takes a lump of coal or other carbon-based uh, substance. It takes time and it takes pressure. So in order to feel confident, we need to engage our core. Now, if I asked you to engage your core, I'll bet you anything, you just got tense all over the place, including your throat, which must never get tense. If you're a speaker, this is your money maker. Take care of it. So <laughs> what I want you to do to engage your core without having to think of anything else is tighten your cheeks. Not these ones, those other ones, the ones you sit on. Tighten your cheeks and nothing else. You can do this sitting, you can do this standing. And so here, go for it. Just your glutes, that's all, nothing else. Tighten them, tighten your bum. Turn that lump of coal that you've <clears throat> inserted and turn it into a diamond. Take half a second, that's all the time it needs. Pressure is what you're applying. Now you have taken that carbon-based <clears throat> lump of coal and you are turning it into a diamond, your diamond. Nothing is harder than diamond. If you tighten your high knee that way, all of a sudden your back is straight, your chest is high, you're free to move, your throat is relaxed, and you can proceed with so much more confidence because you are grounded in your, in your belly. Your, your, your core is behind you, providing you with confidence. The other thing that you can do, of course, is watch where your feet are. Start with neutral. Put your feet together, bunions to bunions and heels to heels so that they are right close together. Now, keep your heels together and splay your toes, splay the front of your feet apart so that your feet form a V. So you're starting like this. Now keep your heels together and form a V. Good. Now, the fingers are now your toes. So lift up on your toes a little bit and put your heels right behind your feet. So you started here, went here, went here. Now your feet are right under your shoulders. From here, you are not giving any message of stress. You just look normal. Chest high. Keep your chest good and high as if you are proud, not arrogant, proud. So chest high, butt tight, feet under your shoulders, arms will naturally go to your sides, and from here, you are showing no fear. It works to show it. It works to feel it. Next slide, please. 
All right, the mindset. Our fear is all in our mind. We come in fearful, we are going to show fearful. If we come in though, with the mindset that it's not about us, we are simply uh, the vehicle for passing information to our listeners. Get the ego out of the equation. It's not about you. It's not about me, the speaker. It's about my ability to get the listeners to understand. It's about finding different ways of presenting material so that the audience gets it. It's called being of service instead of being a show off. As soon as you are in the mindset of it's all about me, the nerves come in and attack with a vengeance. But when it's about you providing a service, all of a sudden, you are there to be good. You are there to be kind. You are there to be sharing. You are there to do all these wonderful, positive mindset things. Be of service. And all of a sudden, your fear will dissipate on its own. Next slide, please. This is me, Rosemary Barnes. My company is Confident Stages. Uh, my slogan <laughs> is speak to engage, speak to succeed. What it's about is that we can, if, if, we speak to engage the audience, then we succeed. If we speak to engage ourselves, no one benefits. I'm Rosemary Barnes. I hope you found this helpful. I would love to answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for this. I, I actually learned quite a lot uh, myself. I, I like the making diamonds part. Uh, <laughs> while, while recording, uh, I, I don't think people are actually going to see us uh, on the top right corner, but I was practicing that and I was wondering what's my face looking like right now. But here's the thing. You only tighten the cheeks, not these ones, just uh, isolate. Mm -hmm. Just the bam bam. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to try that. I'm absolutely going to try that. It works so well. So just go ahead and make diamonds. Yeah. And, and then, See, what happens is you don't have to do that for long. Pretty mm -hmm. soon, in two or three times of doing it, it becomes automatic because it feels good. It feels solid. There are too many things to think about. Mm -hmm. about the technology, about whether you can be heard, about whether you're pacing, about the phrasing, all that kind of thing. You can't think of anything. Yeah. Tightening your bam-bam engages your core and provides you with the power that you need to go on. I like that. And it does it automatically. I like that. The the part where I struggle uh, most in my case is the rehearsing part. Yes. I feel like I, I can do it, but I feel like if I know too well what I'm going to say, I struggle with my words when I actually do the presentation. Here's the big one. Yeah. If you are trying to memorize your presentation, just stop it. Mm, okay. Stop it. Speakers are not actors. Right. Exactly. Some words are. But speakers are not actors. Actors spend so long, their whole lives, trying to take a written script and present it as real and uh, uh, in the moment. Yeah. Speakers aren't trained to do that. So when we try and memorize, it comes out wooden. Mm -hmm. It comes out no vocal variation, no vocal pacing variation, no, and then our biggest fear becomes, oh, I'm going to forget. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we do, because fear activates the adrenals. Adrenaline is how you can lift that burning car off that poor baby. Notice that the heroes rarely remember doing it. Mm -hmm. Adrenaline causes us to get a little bit dumb in the brain. Mm -hmm. So we fight the adrenaline rush by making diamonds. Mm -hmm. It causes our whole metabolism to slow down and settle in. So when we rehearse, wh which part do we rehearse? You, you rehearse, you rehearse from your jot notes. Mm -hmm. Now, some people, some people like to write out their whole presentation word for word to word because it's mm -hmm. a, a process. The, the, my brilliance comes out of my pen first. I don't even know it's in my head. It comes out my fingers and my pen. But if you try and uh, marry every single carefully crafted word, 
you're in danger of forgetting them. That sets us off and away we go down that old swirly swirly. The, 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 so what you do is you can write it out and then just make jot notes. Mm -hmm. cool. Just the topic, the topic, the topic. When you're using this system then, mm -hmm. you can take point one and you are allowed three things in point one. It's introduction, it's explanation and illustration, and then it's transition to the next point. Mm -hmm. So your notes just have to say the three things you want to say in this topic. That's it. Yeah. Then you just say them. Mm -hmm. And if you're breathing slowly and if your body is engaged, your brain will be engaged and you will remember. And if you don't, for heaven's sake, look at your index card. Look at your notes. Mm -hmm. No one is going to think less of you because you checked to make sure that all the important details were shared. Yeah, that's a good point. Actually, I I don't know why I don't know why we don't do that. I actually don't have cards next to me, but that's actually kind of nice. But if I forget, because as you said, what's important is that they learn something, so they don't care that I'm actually looking at my card for twenty not twenty seconds, but like two seconds to get back into what my message is. That's right. And when you present it confidently. When you casually walk on back to the lectern and you pick up your piece of paper and you go, got that, got that, ah, oh, this is a good one, and you keep talking, they don't care. It just humanizes you. Yeah. The problem about speakers is they think they have to be superhuman. Mm -hmm. Now, in a way, linguistically, we do. We can't say I'm going to the store <laughs> in order to appear all kinds of confident, proficient, and intelligent we have to be careful how we pronounce words. But it's how we pronounce the words we can think of when we're doing it. The topics, though, write them down. Mm -hmm. Don't panic yourself needlessly. Yeah. Yeah, I love this. Ajit, you got, you got any question? So while he's typing, the photo in your background, is that, is that from Vancouver Island? It's actually from Vancouver. Nice. But the trees back there are, uh, oh, bother. Okay, my mind, I must breathe because my mind is <laughs> Diamond. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's a Western Canadian and uh, tree. That's the only place it grows. Mm -hmm. uh, you won't find that tree anywhere else. So. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. All right. I have the same fear while talking to. Oh, to strangers. So not during a presentation, but yeah. just casual conversation. Yeah. Here's the trick to that. When you're talking to strangers, the very best way to be an absolutely brilliant conversationalist is let them go first. Ask an engaging question, one that can't be answered with yes or no, and get them talking. Mm -hmm. Then you slide yourself in. This is how networking works as well. When you go to a networking uh, place or when you just meet strangers for the first time, how do you do? What brought you here this evening? Or what are you hoping to get from this today? Or uh, uh, if it's just a stranger on the street, you just start a chit chat about something about them. People love to talk about themselves. <laughs> so get them talking and then simply engage with them. Take the pressure off yourself. So she's saying, yeah, I, I am good at listening. Uh, I, I, I do think that a conversation, uh, listening is, is a big part of conversation. I think, I think this counts. The, I just finished uh, reading a book by Chris Voss and it's called Never Split the Difference. He was <clears throat> the master negotiator for all the, the kidnappings and terrorists and all that kind of thing for the FBI. <clears throat> uh, and he taught uh, the people at Quantico, uh, all the FBI's training grounds, how to negotiate. And he will tell you in absolute certain terms that when you are negotiating, mm -hmm. your job is to listen. Uh, and put yourself in the other guy's shoes. Listening is uh, more powerful than speaking any day. Yeah. So when you're the speaker, 
Your job is to get the audience to listen. Mm -hmm. You have to engage them. You can't speak at them. You have to speak with them, for them, for their benefit. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you are a superhero because you've helped them with their top of mind problem. Yeah, one, one thing for me is, is one of the reasons I have a hard time with uh, doing presentations like on camera <laughs> is that I don't see my audience. I know, I know in the chat that they're there and they're, they're replying, but I don't, I don't see that they're actually listening. So that's why it's much easier for me to do a public speaking engagement in front of a crowd because I see their reactions. I see their smiles. I can, I can gauge like, am I in the right direction? Am I doing it properly with them? And yeah, so it, it's much harder, I feel, on, on camera to, to be able to do that. What a great many people do is they <laughs> honestly attach a teddy bear to the side of their monitor. Oh, that's so good. good. <laughs> a picture of a loved one, a, their child that's respectful and that is listening to them and you talk to them. I love this. I love this. And, and I looked at the, in my recordings. I never, like my eyes are never looking at the right place. Because right now I'm assuming I'm looking at your your picture, but really people see that I'm not looking straight in the camera. Right. We should be looking at the little dot. <laughs> now I'm looking to the public. Now <laughs> I'm looking at you. There's a difference. So up there, right by the camera lens, tape a picture. Yeah, that's amazing. I love this. And talk to a supportive person. Yeah, I love this. And when you are rehearsing, it is always wise to videotape it. Yeah. And then watch yourself. But here's a trick. When you are listening and watching your video, you have to break it into pieces because we don't like seeing ourselves on video. We become super critic. Yeah. So uh, what you want to do first is take the, take the visual out completely and just listen to what inflections were in your voice. Then the next time you take the audio out and you just watch yourself. Oh, that's cool. What ticks do you have? I used to, until I watched myself, realize that when I made a huge and glorious point, I would let my arms drop to the sides and slap my legs just a little bit. Mm -hmm. First of all, you could hear it. Yeah. And second of all, instead of looking like, and that's the, the, the core of it, what it looked like was that I was arrogant and smug. Mm. That if you don't get this, how stupid are you? Blah. I mm. didn't realize that's what it looked like. Watch yourself, but watch yourself for different things. Are you, see what many peeps, fearful speakers do is they use Velcro elbows. They motion just with, you know, like T-Rex. Yeah. Uh, get your elbows away but in order to get those elbows away you have to feel secure the same with steepling and crossing your arms when you have velcro elbows you look like a bit of a muppet <laughs> open those elbows out there was a comedian uh i don't know if you remember this fellow he used to smash watermelons on stage <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and splatter the whole audience <laughs> he did a thing where the only difference between a lady with a handbag and a cowboy was where the elbows are. <laughs> um, so get your arms out. Now, except when you're with video, because if I do this, you yeah. can't see my arm. Mm -hmm. You have to limit to the screen. Mm -hmm. So be careful that your elbows don't start coming in and you start closing in on yourself, chest high regardless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that, I like that. What, what, what's weird for me right now, watching watching me doing videos, I, I like to change my style frequently. And I think the first time we talked, I had a bit more hair and I completely shaved it. Uh, this, <laughs> and I, I look like Walter White from Breaking Bad. I see him when, when I'm watching myself and it, it's super weird. Very disconcerting, isn't it? Uh, and, and we look at any video we see of ourselves, and we go, <laughs> demon, demon. Uh, nobody else looks at you that way. Yeah. Nobody else. So you have to turn it around and see what they see. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have to listen for our filler words. 
the filler words are um er so like well exactly uh, i use them so much you know what we're doing when we do that we're giving ourselves a split second to think because the exact word isn't on the tip of our tongue exactly speakers are very afraid of silence somehow we have it in our head that if we're not spewing forth at, with a constancy of something good. Uh, <laughs> see, I should have filled that in with an um or an er, but no. Leave it alone. Just shut up. <laughs> Instead of an um, er, well, so, just stop talking. Yeah. Give yourself a millisecond to think. They won't notice. And what's more is the audience needs silence. They need a chance to hear it see it, understand it, accept or reject it. And if they accept it, internalize it. All of that in the space of time of one um. Mm -hmm. Give them time. Give yourself time. I like Slow that. it down for yourself, yes, but primarily for the audience. It took us years to come up with what we know and what we're sharing. They're hearing it for the first time. Slow it down. Perfect. I'm going to get better at that. I'm, I'm, I'm filming every single one of them. So we'll, we'll see the progression. I'm, I'm okay. going to do a progression video. So I have to keep myself accountable for, for what I'm saying right now. You bet. <laughs> All right, it's been uh, 32 minutes, so, um, oh, um, anything, anything else to add? The only thing that you have to do to correct the ums is know that they're there. Exactly. We are self-correct. We are self-correcting. It's simply being aware that you do it. So watching yourself on video or listening to yourself is the best teacher you can have. Right. If you're aware that they're there, you will stop. I agree. So anything else to add? Only that please don't be afraid of the fear. The fear adds that little spark. Just get the butterflies to fly information by including your body, breathing high, mind space of be of service. And it dissipates like a smell in the wind. I love this. Thank you guys for joining. This was Skill Up Academy with Rosemary Barnes on how to fight your fear of public speaking. I, I actually personally learned quite a lot from that and I'm excited that this is recorded and we're gonna put that live uh, on YouTube. All right, see you. Thank you everyone, bye-bye.